Astronomy for Beginners. Uh, my name is Martin and today's guide I'm going to demonstrate to you guys is collimating uh, Newtonian. Um, now I'm going to tell you a little bit of a brief story. All right? A lot of guys, in particular yourselves, beginners or people starting out, um, always consider what to buy on uh, certain type telescopes and like the reflector or Newtonian. Um, a lot of beginners get turned away from those telescopes, which is a quite, quite, I find it quite um, crazy, really, um, because considering you're buying a telescope that offers the most aperture for the money, all right, uh, a telescope that's going to show you many, many uh, objects because of the clear aperture, and also the optics, you know, what you're paying for for a so like you pay a six inch uh, aperture uh, Newtonian compared to a six inch refractor, a Newtonian is literally going to cost much, much, much cheaper than the refractor of that same aperture. Where I mean, a, a six inch refractor might cost thousands, while a six inch reflector will cost around probably two to three hundred pounds, which is a massive difference in a thousand pound plus for a refractor. Now, the biggest um, the uh, biggest thing that a lot of beginners get turned away from reflectors is there is this, um, a problem with new, new toilets. From time to time to time, if you're uh, setting up your, if you bought a reflector or a Newtonian and you take it somewhere to a dark site or you take it to your, uh, your, your friend's house or something to show him and all that, what usually happens is that uh, the mirrors go misaligned. Basically, as you move about, those screws and the bolts come loose. And what happens? It throws the mirrors out of alignment, and that's what happens. And also, when the mirrors come out of alignment, what that does is it affects the views, and obviously um, it, your views will be less sharp and, and maybe even blurred, or might not even see see anything at all. Now, a lot of a lot of people, are, you know, that I know, that seem to scaremonger a lot of beginners away from reflectors and say, yeah, get a refractor, get a refractor, they're easy. Yeah, fair one, but if you've got a lot of money to fork out for a decent refractor size, then yeah. But reflectors, I think the most ideal telescope for a beginner, all right? Collimation is so, so easy, all right? Don't let people try and put you off a lot of things, all right? Collimation is that easy. You just need a certain, a few certain amount of tools and someone to demonstrate it. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to collimate a Newtonian. All right? It's so easy. All right? You just need a few tools. And the tools that I've got here is usually, okay, you usually have a 2 mil allen key like this, for example. All right? Usually you get these with the telescope, you know, with the Newtonian. You usually get them. Because uh, usually on some Newtonians have a uh, allen, allen key bolts on the, the second row. So this is what you need to use for all of them, to adjust that. And you need a, a good quality screwdriver, all right, like this one. Obviously, I don't have a proper screwdriver, but I use a Gerber instead or Leatherman's. That will work just as well, because you know, they've got a good Phillips tip. Ideal Phillips screwdriver, all right. And you need one of these, number one accessory that I always highly recommend. When you, if you first buy a reflector or a Newtonian, Get yourself one of these as well, all right? This is a laser collimator. You get different forms, all right? And the very different prices. However, this is a, uh, an Antares one. Uh, you can buy these from a lot of good astronomical uh, telescope shops, all right? Uh, this costs about 30 to 40 pounds, but this is really essential, all right? Um, there's other methods to collimate uh, a Newtonian, but I found that this is the most accurate and the easiest way to collimate a Newtonian without a doubt. And like I say, um, you do get different types. Some have a fixed brightness. However, this one has a variable brightness. So if you're looking for a, uh, you know, you're after a good laser collimator, get something with a uh, varying brightness. And it's so easy, you know, you just just the brightness. Because sometimes the brightness might be a bit too bright and might affect the accuracy when you're trying to align the optics. But get someone that's got a varying brightness if preferred. But uh, apart from that, these, you know, absolutely fantastic. I, you know, if you're getting into a new get one of these as your first accessory, without a doubt, right? 
because you're going to use it. And the good thing about this device is you can get your colour mission within minutes. It's that easy. All right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to move it down to the cellar, and I have a 12-inch uh, dub Sony that I have. All right, and it's in the worst possible colour mission. It's basically the nightmares of all nightmares, so beginners. So we'll see you then. Okay then. Right, here's my 12-inch um, dub no tuning. It's as you can see, it's a massive telescope. All right, a big massive mirror in there. All right, right. This is in serious um, condition of collimation. Now you think to yourself, well, oh, that looks fine and all that, but you'll find out when you start putting your eyepiece and you start looking at objects, and then things start to look not look the same. All right, they look blurred and out of vision, and all that. So what we're going to do is, is um, I'm going to do a step by step on collimating this mirror. All right. All right, in a nice easy format so you guys understand where I'm coming at. Okay, what you have here is if you look here, okay, right, what you see here is the secondary mirror, all right, this secondary mirror, all right, um, at the moment um, you'll see the mirror at the main mirror at the back. And in that main mirror at the back, you'll see um, like a donut in the middle. All right, and you can see the donut at the middle. All right, that's what you can see at, at the middle. All right, uh, what's happened here is um, those mirrors are slightly misaligned. Right, but um, what we're going to do is, is I'm going to fit this uh, laser collimator to this eyepiece here, right? Here's the eyepiece, right? Now, this has a two inch eyepiece. Now, most tel uh, most reflectors have a, an inch and a quarter, but because this has a two inch adapter, um, I try to fit one of these. Now, these are a self-centering adapter, all right? High, ideally suited, all right? Um, a reason why I like using these, because of the self-centering, all right, it basically aligns your, um, your image, obviously your uh, eyepiece train, and your laser collimator as square as possible. All right. This could be used for um, uh, other things like putting your eyepieces, or you can also connect a camera because you can take this whole top end and you can use it as a camera adapter. All right. But this also used to accurately try and get your uh, optics aligned. So we're going to fit that on there. All right. Screw it on there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fit the laser collimator. Okay, right here is the laser collimator. Right, and basically we're going to fit it in there. Have you noticed? I'll be facing this collimator down to about here. Right, basically you want this sight here to be um, pointing downwards, so you can so when you adjust something at the bottom of the tube, you can see the sight. So right, so we're going to angle it here. Okay, so we fit it in nice and easy. If you don't go in, just screw this a bit more. So right, I'm trying to do this one-handed. So it's a little bit difficult, but well, okay. Right. Then, once you've got that uh, thing, you basically make sure that your your focus is on tight. So basically, hit the bottom here, put down the locking screw. All right, and that holds it in position and doesn't move out uh, the 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 laser collimator. Then, at this position, you see the adjustment. All right, at this adjustment, I right, you just carefully. Turn that just been you know to a varying brightness, okay. And what we're going to do now, we're going to look down the tube, okay. Right, I don't know if you can see that very well, but at the moment, what you see is you see the laser and it's way out, way out there, okay. And uh. Yep, you can see it just there. You can see it just way out. Now, tip is, is from the look where I'm looking at it, is is the secondary mirror square? All right. If it doesn't, then you know deep down, uh, the first thing I would do is check the secondary mirror. All right. Now, at the moment, um, these these bits here. These are M4 by uh, 20, well these are a bit longer, but you can get them 
M4 by about 25 millimeters long thread. All right, it's a metric thread. All right, you can buy these. Um, what's what's doing here is these are replacing the Allen keys. All right. Now, the reason why I, I like using these because they're easy to collar me. All right, you can just turn with your fingers and all that. All right, and that will get it in alignment so much easier. So avoid tools and all that. Now. <clears throat> One thing I did uh, forgot to mention is, if you haven't got those fun screws and all that, then it's not too worry. You just have to use Allen key. But even now, even if you're using any form of tools, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your reflector is tilted down horizontally. Okay, that's the first requirement. All right. The reason why I said that, all right, is because. Um, your mirrors will actually, uh, you know, if you drop anything down that, where is it going to go? Right, the first place it's going to go is going to hit that main mirror. So make sure you tilt that, that telescope tube all the way down, horizontal, because if you do drop anything down there, it's not going to drop all the way down to the tube. So that's the first priority you've got to do, all right, is make sure that this tube is horizontal. All right, I can't stress it enough, and I have actually dropped stuff before. Alright, and it can be easily done when you get tired or frustrated or something goes wrong, that will happen. So make sure, again, a habit of tilting that tube horizontal, alright. <clears throat> right, as I mentioned before, uh, use of these um, Allen keys, you know, you know, also I use these uh, replacement uh, thumb screws, alright. These are absolutely brilliant. They do an awesome job, alright. And they only cost a couple of pence, and it's the best upgrade you can ever do to any uh, Newtonian. All right, but you must get the right thread. Also, in the middle of there, you'll see a, a Phillips screw. Right. What I'm trying to clarify first is it's all right adjusting these three screws to get the uh, to alignment. But just check. Reason why you check this main screw here in the middle is to check see if that secondary mirror is actually square so what we're going to do is we're going to t move this mirror all right i'm going to use this uh, this uh, um, phillips screwdriver all right and we're going to uh, check if it's tight obviously that may that secondary mirror is loose so basically i unloosened it i then tilt it over all right and as you can see already if you're not going to see it there already I'm moving that uh, secondary mirror already and it's just moved just like that you see that look at that so it just shows you uh, that if that's loose that could also affect your performance all right <clears throat> you can also see if your secondary mirror is out of alignment all right if you take uh, if I take this off all right you'll see now right your secondary mirror, right? See here, right? You can tell straight away that uh, if it's tilted, you'll see you can't see the primary mirror. What you're trying to do is when you tilt that mirror, you want that mirror like that, so that you can see the sec uh, see the primary mirror like that, and then that should be square enough. All right, okay, and that's what you're trying to look for. All right, and that's another tip if your secondary mirror is uh, out of uh, sync like that. Okay, so basically what we're going to do now is going to we're going to tilt we're going to tilt that mirror, All right? Adjust it. All right, it's so easy. Don't let this concern you a slightest. All right, so we're going to move it. It's on the square, and then what we're going to do is get the screwdriver. 